All right, so to make the circle, we need to give it a radius. So this is gonna be the radius of the circle inside of this quad. Okay, so then we need coordinates to use for the circle. So we, we're gonna use the UV coordinates. Plugging this in gives us, you know, zero to one on each axis, uh, but we need to remap that one. So we wanna have zero in the center instead of in the bottom left. So we're gonna wanna do a remap. So with this, zero is in the center, and then we have negative coordinates to the bottom left, which is what we want, right? To make a circle out of this, uh, we can grab the length of this vector. That should give us a gradient from the center. So that should be that. And you can see that that's kind of, it's black in the center because the distance to the center is like very small. And then it gets like bigger and bigger the further away we go. The radius needs to do something. Um, so we can subtract the radius from the length here. And then we divide that by the partial derivative of itself. And that gives us a crisp and nice circle. Look at that circle. Um, and then we can just like change the radius of that one. Partial derivative is the, it's a screen space derivative of whatever you send this one. Um, so, uh, okay, so if we wanna do this without anti-aliasing, it would look something like this. Um, it basically checks if something is below or above a certain value, and then it gives us the circle, right? Um, I don't know if you can see the aliasing issues here, um, but we can, we can, we can Photoshop this. There we go. Uh, but if you do the partial derivative, you can compensate for the rate of change. Uh, and then instead of, instead of just doing this pure threshold, you remap that range by dividing it by the partial derivative. If we go to Photoshop and compare these two. So this is with the partial derivative and this is without. Uh, so that's one way of using partial derivatives to, if you have this, um, a gradient of something and it passes zero. A quick way to make that a threshold that's anti-alias is just divided by the partial derivative of, of itself. I want to do an abs on this so that I get a ring. Uh, so just to show you what that looks like. So now it goes from zero to one out from a specific ring instead of just being from the center. Um, and then I want to subtract the thickness of that ring um, there we go. And then I want to do the partial derivative shenanigans. So that should give us a ring like this. Neat. Uh, right. I wanted to make this a gradient and not just a straight up sharp edge uh, to make it look like a glowy thing. That's like a thin glowy ring, right? Uh, so I think I can just multiply by some pixel glow size value. Might need to divide, I don't know, who knows. That works. Um, perfect. Also I think I wanna make the thickness smaller now that we have the glow. That looks a bit buggy. Probably because the partial derivative now has a discontinuity. I wonder if I could use this one and it would work just fine. I think so. Perfect. Okay, now I wanna one minus this one to make it a glowy ring and not a glowy non-ring. This should be the uh, transparency of the ring, right? Uh, so let's hook that up to opacity. Uh, and then we wanna set the color of this ring. And I usually have two colors for everything because I am fancy like that. Because <laughs> um, I like hue shifting. So let's do that. Basically, we're going to interpolate between these two colors based on the ring fade, right? I guess this should be like inner and this is outer. Plug that in there. There we go. Should also make the glow size bigger just to see that this works. Dark blue and the outer one and inner I want a glowy cyan bright thing. What a ring. What do we think of this ring? Is it a ring? Do we like this ring? Ooh, do we want to go fancy? I have an idea for how we can make this super fancy. The thing I was thinking of what if when you select the thing, it actually appears? 
like it animates out, like like in a nice swoosh. Wouldn't that be super cool? All right, let's grab some angular coordinates. So our radial coordinates now, but not angular. So then we grab the good old a tan two. Component mask, some shenanigans out of this. Uh, incorrect. Correct. That's the one we want. Uh, all right, so we have some sort of angular thingy. Now we need to animate this over time, right? Uh, so let's make a slider for that called um, appear or something. Appearness. <laughs> Um, right, this would be another job for the partial derivative, I believe, right? Because now we need to mask this based on this. Um, so again, we subtract whatever slider value we have from this. Uh, and then we threshold that. So that's going to be another partial derivative. And then we divide by the thing. And then we do the clamp 0, 1. There we go. So this is going to be our angular mask. So just pulling this one, you can see on the right, it does the appearance animation thingy, right? Let's just start out by uh, multiplying this. I don't think I want to do that in the end. I think I want to shrink it rather than multiply. Um, but for now, let's multiply. Um, there we go. Look at that ring. Isn't that cute? All right, let's make a fade size for this one. So that's going to be a multiply on this. That looks pretty good. I like that. That looks pretty good. Uh, doesn't appear to fully close though. No, there, there are a few things that I need to do to fix the, the start and the end of this animation. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with this so far. Right, so it doesn't close at the end right now. It kind of just like starts appearing and then it, there's like a bit of a fade at the end there. Um, so let's fix that. Uh, also, appearance is reversed. So let's flip it. So at the end, I want to fade this in completely, right? I'm probably just going to make a linear fade at the end rather than trying to make all the rest of the math work. Um, so at the end of this one, from like appearness 0.96 or something, let's do an inverse LARP of that. From 0.95 to 1, we want that to be a range of 0 to 1. So this one is going to flash at the end. Uh, so this one is zero all throughout this range here. But as soon as I hit 0.95, it's going to start ramping up to one. So you can see that it goes to white at the very end. Um, I'm going to use that to interpolate between two different states. Uh, one is the previous state here, where it's doing the animation. Uh, and then at the end, I'm going to blend into the fully closed circle uh, with a simple linear blend. So where do we do that? That would be the divide here, or this one should be fully white at that last point, right? Um, so basically we want to interpolate this one um, between the animation state to just simply the value of one based on this uh, value here. And then that's going to be the new input here. There we go. So now this last bit will then close the circle with a linear interpolation. Perfect. So here's something I really like about using partial derivatives is that uh, the thickness of the this ring is consistent regardless of distance to it, right? Um, or consistent in screen space. So that's like super useful for gizmo-like things, right? So even if you zoom out, you have the same distance uh, or the same width of the circle, um, even though the radius is changing in screen space. I think that's a nice little feature of partial derivatives. Sometimes I feel like I know what I'm doing. It's crazy. Heck, this is nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just like felt good about like knowing these things. Heck, I think it's working. That's so good.